The landscape is loaded with flowers, chocolates, and sparkling gifts as we head into Mother's Day weekend. If we do not embrace motherhood as a spiritual ministry and a high calling from God, the world will beat us down, says Marina Slayton. The former university professor is the mom of four children, ages 14 to 25. Her husband, Gregory Slayton, wrote the international bestseller, Be a Better Dad Today. Well, they've pooled their 25 years of parenting wisdom for this book, Be the Best Mom You Can Be, a practical guide to raising whole children in a broken generation. Wow, does that capture it? Welcome. Thank you for having us. It's from a blessing. Washington. <laughs> right now from Hanover, but we've been all over the world, so. Okay. But we're New Hampshireites right now. All right. Hard to keep up with you both. Now, has there really ever been a more challenging climate for raising spiritually and emotionally healthy children? This generation of children are getting hit very hard, and we wanted in this book to address those issues. Our own children have friends who have committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Suicide in America is the third leading cause of deaths of teenagers. So when we sat down to write this book, we wanted to talk about the tough issues we're not growing our families in a bubble. Mm -hmm. This culture is pressing down. But we have found in our own lives that God gives us hope and he gives us the equipment that we need to build mm -hmm. the families we desire. Well, and you're not living in a bubble. I, I'm just reading about the things you've dealt with, a, a child who was bullied, the moves you've made, one of the biggest stressors for families. Mm -hmm. See, I, I was a, at least one step behind you. Uh, but you've, you've traveled so much as a family. You've dealt with a lot of things. This, this is a book about what you've learned mm -hmm. in the right. process. That's right. We ourselves, have come, we came from broken families. We didn't have parents who modeled a strong, healthy family. And so when we were uh, saved and then when we became um, husband and wife, I think we knew that if we just depended on hope, we were not going to get where we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And God put us uh, in a place of developing a vision, a vision for our family and commitment. And I can say after 25 years, he has gone well beyond all that we could have hoped for. Well, it's very easy for us to despair mm. uh, for families, for marriages. Mm. Uh, good news. Uh, very exciting to see the response, Gregory, to your book for dads. Dads aren't even the readers. <laughs> Tell us about it. Well, it's been wonderful. And, you know, I'm not the world's greatest writer, but I, when my father abandoned my brothers and myself when we were young, I really realized, wow, fatherhood and motherhood is the most important job we have. And my dad abandoned his job and for 25 years we never heard from him. And when I became a dad, I said, wow, I don't want to follow in those footsteps. Mm -hmm. And so the Be a Better Dad Today and now Marina's book, our book on motherhood, Be the Best Mom You Can Be, is really about applying God's wisdom to your particular circumstances. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in cookie cutter approaches, you know, tiger mom for everybody. It doesn't work, right? Each child is different. We have to be students of our children mm -hmm. and then take God's wisdom and apply it. There are some things that are general for everybody. He wants us to love each other. He wants us to forgive each other. He wants us not to hold grudges. Those are super important things in a marriage and in a family. But there are specific things, understanding our children's likes and dislikes, their attributes, they really help us to help them to grow up to be all they can be. Mm -hmm. I've got some tags in my book. New! Exclamation mark. New thought or new insight. Mm -hmm. One of them was about discipline. Hmm. Ten to one. Yes. Marina, what's that about? Well, discipline is a hotbed topic in every generation. It challenges all of us. And I think in the 21st century, we're bombarded with so many uh, secular ideas of discipline that I really wanted to confront this from two angles. The 10 to one angle in terms of for every one part discipline, make sure you love your child. Uh, John in 2 John wrote, I am not giving you a new commandment, love one another. Mm -hmm. So uh, the basis of every relationship between uh, family members has to be in love. But discipline is our responsibility as parents if we don't want our children to grow up and be teenagers at the age of 50. They have to take consequences. 
And my other approach to it was to talk about disciplining ourselves as women and as moms. We can't hope to discipline our children if we ourselves are not disciplined. No room for disdain here. Uh, and that ties into the, to the discipline aspect. It's essential, you say. Absolutely. But you don't want to be showing contempt for your children. Mm -hmm. They need to see that we're delighting in them. God disciplines us because he loves us, right. Right? That's right? But it's not criticism and it's not condemnation. Mm -hmm. It's for their benefit. And we need to step up to the plate. Otherwise, we'll be part of this sad scenario of teenagers who are left to raise themselves with disastrous consequences. Now, Gregory mentioned Tiger Mom. We know what she's about. Crack the whip. That's right. High achieving. And now I don't know if this applies to you, Gregory, as well, but for sure, Marina, you were raised with that high expectation, high performance culture, and you pulled it off uh, pretty well. Uh, academic achievement, you got two master's degrees, you did build a career, you have been a great wife, you, you, you married a, a, a venture capitalist here who is a professor at Ivy League universities. This is all sounding pretty high bar to me. Well, I didn't write the book, Be the Most Perfect Mom You Can Be, because I came to see that as slavery. Mm -hmm. I tried that in our early years, and I realized the Lord had come to free me only God is perfect. He wasn't looking at me in the lens of disappointment and expectation mm -hmm. and benchmarks. He wanted me to relax into my motherhood role and raise children who are understanding that who they are and whose they are is so much more important than what they do. Very surprising and not something we've talked about a lot in my experience here. You talk about the importance of teaching your children how to handle failure. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned suicide, Marina. Yes. Uh, our, our young people are Well, their struggling. sense of self-worth is tagged to ephemeral, secular aspirations. You know, get straight A's, get into the Ivy League school, get that high-powered job, look beautiful, be thin. I mean, it's all about doing rather than you're my child and I love you. And I think it's so critical for our kids to just have that sense of belonging. And we found that it was really in developing a family vision that we started to move towards how do you get where you want to go. When we were on our honeymoon, Gregory said, we should start a family journal. We need to begin to talk about what we want, not just today, but in five or 10 and 20 years. So we started to memorialize, to journal what we were looking forward to. And once our kids were old enough, they began to participate in this journal and vision. It's really vision building. Mm -hmm. And um, I really encourage all parents, whether you've been married for 10 days or 10 years, um, start talking about a family vision. Don't assume it'll happen. We need to be intentional in this culture. Now this is a family project. It's about five chapters. You're, it's like a Magna Carta in here, your vision <laughs> statement. Uh, but give parents watching an idea of uh, what does that comprise? What, what kinds of things do you talk about in that vision statement? Keeping in mind the kids helped yeah. to write mm. it. The, our family vision statement is really where do you want to be with your wife, with your children, with their children? Right, in let's say when you're in your 60s or 70s, right? So for us, that's only 20 years away. If you're young married, that may be 40, 50 years away. But the point is, you get on the same page. You have a vision and then you chart out, okay, how are we gonna get there? If we wanna have a, a cohesive, loving family that maybe gets together all on Christmas and or whatever it is, okay? You chart out what's important to you then how are we gonna get there? How are we gonna establish those family traditions right now mm -hmm. and strengthen them? You see, the point about the vision statement, first of all, it's a wonderful discussion because you'll find that even if you've been married for 10 years, if you haven't talked about it before, you and your wife have slightly different or maybe very different visions. I'm so sure you get into your kids' hearts too. You do, them. you get them involved and you let them say, hey kids, you know, your role in this family is vitally important. Mm -hmm. If you want, here, what do you want to be? Right? What part, how do you want to play a part in this family? And then how are we going to make that happen? It's not just dependent upon mom and dad. 
you have an important role, and the older you get, and the older we get, the more important your role is going to be. So that's important to help them understand that as they grow up, they take a bigger and bigger role in the success of the family. And I guess you have to do, you know, check up, course mm -hmm. correction. Oh, yeah. How, are, we, are we staying in line with our vision? <laughs> that's right. Family? <laughs> that's right. And we've had some very family, we have family devotions, and we'll bring out the journal and... Uh, we've had some very, uh, you know, funny reactions to some of our hopes, you know, ten year, our vision statements 10 years ago. Later. later. That's, yes, right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. When Kids you look like, back, oh, you so can, sure, yeah. you know, and sometimes it's sad because it's part of life. You, yeah. in the busyness of life, I have a chapter there, Time is Your Friend, because one of the uh, greatest stresses on families now mm. is just busyness. Yeah. Everybody's flying around. Right? Absolutely. And sometimes, as I point out in the book, it's not just the difficult times. It can be the very blessings yeah. that begins to suck the air out of the family room. You just stop having family dinners because you're going to soccer, to piano, to this, to that. And it all seems so important. But really, it's urgent, not important. Yeah. I want to put out two words that are foundational for this theme. Be the best mom you can be. And that is love and flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that, Marina. I said, absolutely. Those are powerful words. And prayer. And prayer. Amen. Keys, right? Yes. To, to getting on course and surviving on the course. Exactly. And I always pray for my children that I'm the first to know, not the last to know, mm. uh, what they're going through because... They do have a lot of ways these days through social media to develop a life much younger away from you. Yes. And so, and the Lord has answered every one of those prayers. You know, I just, I've joined every mom's group I can. I can't support prayer enough as a spiritual weapon in mm. family. Mm. Wonderful. Well, one of your children, your daughter, yes. is in the military, and I'm sure that has influenced uh, an initiative that we, Gregory just tell us about as our time wraps well, up. Well, thank you. Yes, we are a military family and our daughter, our eldest is 24. She's a lieutenant in the US Army working with Canadian forces, in fact, in Germany over in NATO. So All right. interesting. Yeah, she's just out on a maneuvers with some Canadian forces. Anyway, what we are privileged to, to do is we, we've initiated something called the buy one, give one free mm. program. So if people come to the Huntley Street uh, bookstore, for instance, the e-store here, and buy a copy of the book. First of all, all the royalties go to charity. That's number one. But number two, for every book sold in the month of May and the month of June, and this is for both the motherhood book and the fatherhood book, we're going to give a free copy away to U U.S. or Canadian military mom, that's the mom's book, or military dad who requests it. Wow. And so it's just, it's a small thing, but how much do we owe our military men and women in uniform who defend us from the terrors of, of ISIS and others, and our daughter being there, you know, it's very hard to be a family, and it's even harder to be a military family. It's just a little way we can bless them. So I do hope your readers go and purchase the book, anywhere they purchase the book, Amazon.com, local Christian bookstore, will be giving a free copy to a U.S. or Canadian military mom or dad. Marvelous initiative, marvelous content. I wish we'd had time. We'd need a whole segment to talk about breaking the cycle of generational sin and a few yeah. other marvelous things that you touch on. And it's just exciting to know that this is getting out there and in other languages and mm. families around the globe. And buy one, give one. What a great concept. Be a better dad today. Be the best mom you can be, both available at our e-store. Thanks, folks, so much. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. It's been a blessing. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>